Hello, welcome to this short Pilates workout. We're going to work in a variety of positions today and you don't need any specialist Pilates equipment, but you might want to grab a couple of cans like this or some small hand weights or even some of those small water bottles if you want to increase the challenge on a couple of the exercise, but you don't need them at all. So it's entirely up to you whether or not you use them. Let's get started. So first up today, tennis ball rising. We are going to be standing up for this exercise. Find that standing correctly position with your feet roughly hip width apart, toes pointing forward. Find that connection between your lower ribs and your hips. And just take a second, just have that nice breath in. And exhale. Think about your alignment as well. So ensure that you're standing up nice and tall. Feel the crown of your head rising up nice and straight. So we're going to be mobilizing the body through the knees and through the ankles, keeping the upper body nice and calm. So when you're ready, transfer that weight onto your tiptoes, come back down, bend the knees, okay? So keeping the upper body nice and calm, no movement there at all. Sending the knees over the second toes. Watch that those knees don't start to creep in towards each other. On the side, this looks like this. So really watch that gravity isn't trying to pull you forwards. So use your tummy muscles to keep that upper body completely calm. One more. Let's do some arm circles now. So we're going to work on the right arm first of all. So placing your left hand just over the top of your pecs here, you're going to send that arm backwards. And that's going to feel nice potentially if you've been hunched over recently, perhaps working at a desk, driving, playing with kids on the floor, or just spending lots of time cooking. This is a bit like a backstroke arm. So have energy through those fingers. One more to this direction. Keep those hips facing forwards. So the movement again now is in the top of the body. So the lower body is completely calm. Watch that by rotating the shoulder, your hips aren't wanting to sway. One more. Notice how my wrist is nicely aligned, okay? I'm not flopping that wrist in or out like a penguin. I want you to keep that wrist nicely aligned. Let's go again, backwards first of all. We put our hand up here just to check that we're not starting to sway like this. This can give you a bit of feedback about keeping that arm nice and controlling the move with stability in the upper body and lower body. Don't worry if your arm isn't going very close to your ear. One more. And let's change that direction. Okay, if you hear some clicks, that's fine. Lovely, let's do both at the same time now. And as you do this, really watch that you're not starting to stick your bottom out, okay? Want to really keep that rib to hip connection, okay? So watch that you're not leaning back as your arms go behind you. Change direction. Same thing to be aware of here. Okay, tummy muscles turn on, support that spine. Keep those hips facing forward. Just do two more. Good. Let's do some side bends now. If you choose, you can just keep your arms completely down by your side. I want you to keep that waist nice and still, so your hips nice and still, legs staying calm as well. You can, if you want to, just tip the head and bend down to the side, like so. Come back up, tilt the head, go down as far as you feel able to, and that feels comfortable today. You could pop your arm up by your ear, tip the head, and then go. Try and create a lovely curve in that upper body. Focus now 
I'm thinking that you're inside a toaster. And if you start to creep that shoulder around like this, going over here, you're going to get burnt, okay? The move is going straight down in line with your spine. So really try and think about that today. One more to each side. So you tip the head and you go down. Use this stretch side to pull you up. using that stretch side, pull you up in that lateral flexion. Let's do some waist twists now. We're gonna do these with our arms up above our heads. You're going to send your right arm forward as you twist to the left. Think about being a bit like a corkscrew. There. So I'm really focusing on, again, the movement coming in the top of my body, okay? I'm focusing on hips staying forwards. So there's a little bit of counter rotation going on there. So as I go this way, I want to make sure that my hips aren't swaying in the same direction. So think about using the opposite hip to the way in which you're twisting to stop the movement occurring around your pelvis. And there we go. Let's go down to the mat. Pop a cushion under your mat if you usually use one in class to have underneath your head. First exercise is known to you, ribcage closure. In fact, all the exercises today you know. So, relaxation position. Adjust your hair if you've got a hair bobble in the way like I have. First exercise then, we're going to be making sure that our spine stays nice and still. Keep that nice rib to hip connection. Arms are long down by your side. You're going to take your arms behind your head keeping those wrists aligned, energy through the fingers. That's one. This is a nice, simple exercise. Don't worry if your arms aren't reaching the mat. That's okay. You control them as far as feels comfortable for you today. Keep those knees still. Watch that they're not starting to wibble wobble about. Two more. One. Good. Now we're going to do some spine curls. So this is where we sequentially move the spine. So breathing in to prepare, wriggle yourself, make sure you're nice and comfy on the mat. And you're going to tilt that pelvis, push that pubic bone up towards the ceiling. Find that nice alignment, breathe in. Exhale, bring that spine bone by bone back down to the mat. You're breathing in to prepare. Exhale, rise. Breathe in. And come back down. Keep that going. Look how I really push that pelvis up. Try and find that nice line between your knees and your hips. Come back down. Breathe in. Exhale, rise. Push that belly button up. Keep those shoulder blades on the mat or on the carpet wherever you're working out today. Okay, last one. Knee drops now, so we're going to be working inside the hips. We're going to do our right side first. Pop your hands on the top of your hips. Make sure you're nice and grounded. Melt your body into that mat. And keeping the left leg completely still, I want you to drop that right knee out to the side. Your foot is on its outside border and then bring it back in again. So this is like your oyster that we do on our side. So use your hands as feedback and make sure that left hip isn't starting to push up into your hand. So we're just dropping the right knee out. One more, keeping the top of the body totally calm, other side.
Now let's do both together. So keeping your hands on your hip, or they could just come down by your side. You're gonna open those legs just like a flower or perhaps a butterfly. Good. So taking those soles of the feet onto the outside border. Just watch that your spine isn't starting to arch off the back. I just checked myself there. Let's just do one more. Good. Now we're going to do a bridge and we're going to extend the leg. We've done this in class before. So you're going to take the spine as one off the mat and then take it into a single knee fold. So watch that your knee stays above your hip and you can have your lower leg just nicely pointed. And let's change sides. First of all, just to warm this through. Let's just do a few of those. Of course, you can always pause the video at any time if you want to. You could do a few more. Perhaps you need to answer the door. It doesn't matter, just do what you need to do. Watch that you're not starting to sacrifice that nice, stable position of the spine. Don't start to sag down here, okay? Keep that tummy pushing up. Keep those bottom muscles working. This time, if you can, I want you to try and straighten that leg. Now, don't worry if you can't get it completely straight. It very much depends on your body and how you're feeling today, what else you've done. If you're doing this workout, perhaps you just got out of bed, your body might not be that warm. Or perhaps you're doing this after a busy day, out with the dogs, out with the grandchildren, or just running around doing all your errands. You'll find you have a little bit more flexibility then. Or perhaps you're working in a cold space like I am today. Lots of things affect your performance, so don't let it worry you. Just do what you can. And all the time that you're doing this, I want you to try and keep your body still. Good. Let's just do one more. Very nice. Last one on this side. And then you gently take yourself down to the mat, like that. Now, if you bought some cans, grab them now. We're gonna do some tricep work, okay? So if you haven't got cans, you can just do this exercise using your hands, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna come a bit closer. I'm only using your arms, so keeping your knees in that nice bent position. You're gonna have both your hands above your chest. You're gonna take that can, bottle, or just your hand back towards your ear. Look how I'm keeping my elbow still, okay? My other hand and arm is not moving. It's just my wrist that is taking that can or that bottle or that hand weight if you have them at home towards your ear. So we're gonna do another five, four. Try and keep that elbow nice and calm. Two and one, other side. So keep the right arm still now or the other arm still if you started on the left. You're just taking that back towards your ear as if you're gonna pop these in your ear. Okay, so tummy's staying nice and turned on. Make sure that you're not starting to arch your back. Okay, going for three, two, one. Let's do both together now, okay? So you're taking them both back at the same time. Coordinate so that they are moving at the same time. This might show off an imbalance or perhaps one side is stronger. Perhaps you're finding it easier or one is going faster or slower. Use that information that your body's giving you to coordinate and make sure that we are working on those imbalances. Let's just do another five, four. If you haven't got anything in your hands, keep those fingers nice and straight, nice and long. Two, one, good. This time you're gonna take that over to the other elbow. So it's as if I'm taking it to the other elbow. Okay, so we're working the tricep in a slightly different way now. Five, four, three, two, one. Other way. There. It's as if you're donking it out this side. Keep those tummy muscles turned on. Don't let that spine move. All that's moving is that wrist. Five, four, three, two, 
Oh, now let's take it both of them going back towards the ears again. Let's really fatigue those muscles, working on that muscular endurance. Good, you're doing 10. Let's go together. Nine. Look up towards the ceiling. Keep that jaw relaxed. Don't clench your teeth. You know I'm terrible at counting. I'm going to go for four, <laughs> three, two, one. Good. Let's do this with some tempo now. Let's go down for five, four, three, two, one, and rise. Five, four, three, two, one, and rise. Three more. Five, four, three, two, one, and rise. Two more. Five, four, three, two, one, and rise last time and rise good pop those cans safely down out the way we're going to do our hip rolls now so I'll just move out the way you can of course choose to do these feet down or feet up I will demonstrate these with feet down first of all so glue the whole foot together glue the inside of the legs together palms are up in that low V you're going to drop your legs to one side first of all, keeping them locked together. Watch that top knee doesn't drop down. Bring everything back to center. Start the other way. You can make these quite flowy if you want. Keep those shoulder blades nicely locked down onto the mat. Look up at the ceiling. So if you're doing that with your feet up, you glue them together and you take them again as low as you feel able to control the move. So if you quite like this exercise, do a few more, pause the video. It's a lovely one to start the day with as well. Peeling that spine off the floor, looking up. For the last couple, move your head, turn your head in the opposite direction. To your knees, you get a twist at the top of the spine. So if your legs are going to the left, turn your head to the right. And when you're finished, if your knees are up in the air, just put one foot down at a time. One and two. Good. Give your fingers a little wriggle. Just turn your head from the left to the right. From the left to the right. So we're going to do a few knee circles now. So we're going to work into that hip again. So take a single knee fold, first of all. And you can either have your foot so it's bounced sort of towards your bottom or have your foot so it's nice and parallel in line with your knee. Keeping that knee above the hip, the left leg is staying still, arms are down by your side. Imagine that you've got your crayon on your kneecap and you're now gonna draw a circle. I want you to keep your pelvis still. So look, my foot is staying nice and high, but I'm drawing a circle. So I'm moving that head of the thigh bone inside the pelvis one more time in this direction other way. So my left hand is on my left hip to check that there's no counter um, action needed to keep that pelvis still. If there is, I'm going to make the circle smaller so I can control the stability of my pelvis. You know, Pilates isn't just about mobility, it's about stability. And then I'm going to plonk that one down, take the other leg up, I'm going to put my hand here so I can see what my pelvis is doing. Don't forget, you could have your foot in or you could have your foot high. If your foot's in, just make sure you're not pulling that leg in towards your tummy too much, okay? Have your knee above your hip. So that's where it's gonna be for this. Take it in, take it away, drawing that circle. Perhaps you're drawing a hexagon <laughs> or a pentagon. Try and keep it smooth though. I'm using this hand here to ensure that there's not any movement going on. My pelvis isn't starting to seesaw around the mat. So whichever direction you're going, do one more and then change the circle direction. Okay. Make sure you're not starting to pull that spine away from the mat. So watch your lumbar spine, the small of your back. Last two. And one. And then stop the circle. Gently put that foot down, going onto our tummies. So we're gonna start with diamond press. So have your fingers underneath your forehead or by your temples. Take your glasses off if necessary. 
You're going to breathe in to prepare, turn those tummy muscles on, legs are hip width apart, roll your nose along the mat, and you're coming up, 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 holding at the top to breathe in, exhale, coming down. Breathe in, exhale, rise. Hold at the top, breathe in, exhale, come back down, bone by bone. Think about what we've been talking about in class, about using those back muscles. Don't let your arms and shoulders do the work. Think about engaging your back muscles as well, okay? So, breathe in, exhale, back, 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 back. And then you're coming down, 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 down. Breathe in, exhale, go. Last one. Okay, I'm gonna move on to some hip extension work now, which you know I really love to give you. So we're gonna be working on taking the legs up. Okay, so taking that leg behind the body, it's your hip extension work. So you're gonna have your head down in that um, diamond press position that you just were, and you're gonna lift that thigh off the mat if you can, take it down the other side. Try and keep the leg nice and long. Try not to bend at the knee. Don't worry if you're not getting much height off the floor. It might be that you can only manage a little tiny centimetre or inch or two. That doesn't matter. Contract the muscles. That's the important thing. So squeeze the butt to get the lift. Squeeze and rise. The more of this you do, the easier it will become. We spend so much time with our legs forward, sitting down. We need to get them working behind the body to give us power and stability. Good, last one to either side. Good. Lovely. We're going to do some prone circles now, so very similar. I'm just gonna stay up, but move forwards. There we go, just to check that I can see you in the camera. So you can have your head back down here. You're gonna lift both legs at the same time and I want you to circle them. We're just doing four, three, two, one. Change that direction, so getting those legs up off the floor. And again, if you're not getting this amount of clearance, just work down here. It doesn't matter where you're working. Contracting the muscles will start to activate them, start to get that neuromuscular patterning working, and you will then start to see an improvement. So make sure you've done both directions a few times before you rest and then come back in that child's pose that you know and have a nice stretch. Good. So we're gonna go onto our sides now. We're going to do some front and back and some oyster. So laying on your side in that chair position. So bring your knees up in line with your hips, feet are in line with your knees. Have a little cushion underneath your head. I'll do it like this so you can see me a bit better. There we go. So first, less, first lesson, first exercise is front and back. Make sure your hips are pointing upwards, your top shoulder is pointing upwards, you're not leaning forward. And really important, I don't want you leaning back here as well, looking up at the sky. Look forwards, roughly a metre or so, you should be looking ahead of you at all times. Take that top leg in line with your spine. Now, I want you to really consider, is my leg too far forwards or is it in line with my spine? This is in line with my spine, okay? Running my hands along there, I know that's in line with my spine. I'm going to take my leg forwards and back, having to really focus on that back move. Forwards is easy, back is harder, okay? So... Now I'm going to bring it all the way forward and then take it full range for me. Full range for you will be different. We are all different. Let's just do two more. One. Keeping my hand here so I can feel that my pelvis isn't starting to move. There we go. That was actually three, wasn't it? Still the leg. Pop it down. Now I'm going to move the feet back in line with my spine. And I'm going to do some oyster. You can, if you want to, just pop your head on your elbow. 
So we'll do eight of these. That's two done already. Lift up in the waist if you want to. Three, two, and one. Good. We're going to hold it at the top. Hold it here and do tiny pulses. Eight, seven, six. Put your hand here for some balance now because we're quite dynamic. You don't want to be falling forwards. Down. Let's go again. Eight, seven, six. Look how my feet are still together. Three, two, one, and down. Good. Let's just do eight to finish off. Eight, seven. Count with me. If you put your head down here, think about lifting through the spine so you can get those ants underneath you. Two, and one. Good. Swap sides. Okay, so first exercise, you're in that chair position, so you want your knees in line with your bottom, feet in line with your knees, and your hands, your arm is long underneath your head, so pop a cushion underneath here if you want. I don't have one with me today, so I'm just gonna send my leg long and have a little check that I'm not working too far in front. Have my hand on my hip, I'll know if I'm then pushing forwards or rotating back, or put your hand here for balance. You can then go forwards, um, back, really focus on that back. Watch that you're not taking the leg too high. This isn't an exercise where we want to take the leg higher than in line with the spine. So I'm really thinking now that I'm moving the leg a bit faster and a bit further forward about pushing my leg back and squeezing my bottom, squeezing that back. Good. Two, and one. Nice job. So legs are together. Squidge those feet in line with your hips. And you can keep your head down here with that little cushion. Or if you want to, if this is more comfortable for you, just start raising and lowering that knee. Keep those inside borders of those feet together. And just ensure that you're not, again, leaning forwards or back. Doing six. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Now we're going to hold it up. Do our tiny pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, rest, go again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest down and go again. Eight, seven, so back to your regular tempo. Six, five, four, three, two, Give that hip a rub, as it feels like it's worked really hard. So we're going back up to standing now. Make sure you've got your cans nice and close by. So, we do some bicep curls. So I want you to have your cans facing forward if you're using them, or your hand weights on your bottom. So if you're not using anything, then just clench your fists, okay? Feet hip width apart again. And we're going to squat down and rise and curl as you squat. So I just want you to stick your bottom down. We're not leaning forwards or back. Tummy muscles are turned on again so that I'm not starting to flare at the ribs, okay? So keeping everything nice and balanced, okay? So what I'm not doing is that. We're not doing this. Keeping that rib to hip connection. Let's just do five. Looking straight ahead, four. do this with a little tennis ball rise and rise up and come up down so as you go into your toes you can now do the bicep curl so as you go into your toes whoop, good let's just do four look ahead watch you're not tilting your chin up two Doing some balance work now, I know you love this, your ankle circle. So let's lift your right ankle and just start circling it out. And as you're doing that, we're going to do our floating arms. 
with the hand weights if we're using them. So just taking those hand weights up above your head. Keep your arms in your peripheral vision. Change the direction of your ankle circle. Keep your arms in that peripheral vision at all times. You can still see them. Do a point and flex now, so you're going to point and flex and your arms can be coming up and down in front of you. Watch, you don't start to arch your back. So as your toes come up, your arms are coming up. Good. Last one. Change that direction. I found that really hard to circle my ankle and keep talking and doing my arms as well, so. <laughs> just do what you can so same again so let's start circling those ankles and taking those arms I feel my ankles are dancing they've got their own kind of freestyle going on I know if I do it slower that's going to be easier my toes have got a mind of their own look my balance is fine change direction of the ankle I don't know what my ankle's doing don't look at my ankle it's doing its own thing I've got no control over ankle today. Okay, let's do your point of flex. So pulling your toes up and then down. Watch your balance. Be close to the kitchen table or the back of the sofa as you're doing this or the wall if you want to. Good. Last one. We're going to do some chest expansion now, working on the upper body here in that nice sort of thoracic region. Again, region. You don't need to use your weights if you don't want to. You could grab a dressing gown cord actually at a later date and put that across here if you want to. Otherwise, just use your hands. You don't need to use any accessories. So, we're going to be standing up nice and tall. And what you're going to do is you're just going to push your arms behind you and send that chest up high. Push the arms behind you and then return everything back down. So you're pushing those long straight arms back behind the spine and I want you then to send that chest, open up the throat to the corner of the ceiling. Bring everything back down. Pushing the arms long behind you and then returning. Good. So you're opening up the top of the body there, opening up the throat. Do some neck press now. So we're going to take our left ear, left shoulder, right ear, right shoulder, and now I want you to take that in a nice circle. Just feel the weight of your head and change that direction. One more. Good. Now again, you don't need to use any weights at all for this. You could just keep your palms facing the ceiling with nothing in them, or you can keep these hand weights if you wish. You're going to do dumb weighted, so keeping those elbows locked in by your side. You're going to just take the arms out to the side and return them. So we are rotating the shoulder, keeping the lower body completely still, but bringing the arms in and out. So if you're using the weights, make sure that you're holding them nice and strong, you're not gripping them too tightly. If you're not holding anything, keep those palms facing upwards. This is what it looks like from the side. Watch you're not leaning back. Yeah, notice how I can get my hands quite a long way back. You may not be able to get that range, but just take it where you feel that you're actually working. Okay, take it where it feels comfortable for you today. Just gonna do another three. And one. Good. Pop those down. We're going to do bow and arrow only, so a little bit more rotation on the spine. So, palms facing each other. We often do this laying down or in seated, doing it in standing today. So, palms facing each other, chest high. You're going to turn your head to the right, bend your elbow right and high, take that palm to the hip, twist in the ribs, straighten the arm, and then float everything back to centre. You keep the hips. 
breathing, exhale. Turn the head to the left now, left elbow is bending, left hand is towards your hip and you're twisting the body. Straighten that left arm now and bring everything back to centre. Breathe in, exhale, twist to the right this time, palm to pit. Inhale as you straighten the arm, exhale, bring everything back down. Watch your shoulders, don't go to your ears. Breathe in, exhale, turn the head. Twist those ribs, really think about twisting the ribs. The shoulders move on their own, our shoulders like to move. Breathe in. Nothing. Ribs, 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 ribs. Keep the hips still. Beautiful. Turn the head and bring everything back to centre. Last time. Breathing in. Exhale. Turn the head. Straighten that arm. Exhale. Bring everything back to centre. Good. Wiggle those fingers. Bend the knees. You're done. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being with you. Um, have a good day.